Hello Aries, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. For this round of readings, I was inspired to choose a card from my combined goddess and animal deck that uh, uses the art of Susan Seddon Boulay. You know, when I began this channel, I really had no real sense of where it was going to go or what these messages were going to be like. You know, were they going to be really practical? You know, this is what you should do today kind of messages. But it's beginning to look to me as if it, it may be, I don't, I don't want to call it a finite purpose. but that this is really about this transformational space. I actually want to call it um, an evolutionary space rather than, than strictly transformational because I, I feel there, that there is a kind of um, like a move beyond um, you know the the sort of the classic view of evolution that you know cells mutate you know th that a mutation happens and it turns out to be really great and so any animal that has the mutation survives really well and then it you know kind of becomes uh, SOP for that species. But of course, once you move into this other space of seeing the universe as conscious, then you can never again go back to thinking of these mutations as accidental, really. Right? That everything is moving with awareness, with will with purpose. And I sort of feel as if that is where we are, those of us here and, and more of us. This as, as yet, a, this channel has a small audience at this moment. And I think there are more of us. But that we are all here and that we are mutating. That it's not just transformation in the sense of, right, we think of with it, right, the usual uh, metaphor is the butterfly, right? That the caterpillar becomes goo and then the butterfly emerges. Um, or the snake sheds its skin. But in all of those cases, this is kind of an expected outcome, right? You know, this is what happens with caterpillars. And I feel as if this is something else. Right, that this is an evolution, a mutation that is happening. Um, that we will be something unexpected. You know, it's like a caterpillar becoming goo and then you know, showing up as an antelope, <laughs> right? Out of the chrysalis. That there is a grand invitation happening. And I say that because this first card out of the gate here with Aries is Gaia. Right, the first, the source. Right, I think this is source showing up here in, right, in the Aries reading. Aries sort of as representative of beginnings. 
of perhaps a whole new thing that was unexpected, unplanned, unseen, unpredicted. You know, in astrology, when a, you know, a big sort of uh, aspect is about to happen, you know, uh, you know, Jupiter conjunct Pluto or uh, Pluto opposing Saturn or, you know, Pluto moving into Aquarius. We look back at previous versions of this aspect, right, to sort of get an idea of themes and, and things that might show up. And I think that we are being asked to not do that. To just throw it out. Everything that has come before, forget it. It is finished. At least for some of us. And that may seem sort of unfair uh, in a way But, you know, I sort of think, right, that's how changes occur. You know, when the asteroid came and slammed into the earth and wiped out the dinosaurs, right, that sort of sucked for the dinosaurs and all the other, you know, kind of apex predators that were around at the time. But for some, you know, it worked out really well. So there is, right, it's never, it's never a universal thing. And that's because, you know, we all want different experiences, both the experience of failure and loss and, and pain, as well as the experiences of triumph and change and, and mutation and being something completely new. So I think, well, I, let's, let's start with the cards. I'm already seven minutes in. Um, so we begin with this electric Eight of Wands, right? The, the spark, um, the beginning, and it is here, Aries. And this invitation is to throw out what was what came before. To right, the pages have been coming up a lot in these readings and in my personal readings. Right, this newness to to learn something completely new. To be an empty cup as much as possible. That it is possible to discard outcomes that came before, even archetypes that came before. Right? What is Aries? You know, what can Aries mean, right, in a new way? And then we get this Mother of Pentacles sort of Gaia also. And, right, that this change can be, right, a whole new life created. Right, that this you know, you're kind of, um, I want to say that rather than mutating, right, in a chrysalis, that you are birthing something new, right? You are, you're sort of birthing yourself. You're birthing your new life. And that this, this new life that you are birthing is not perhaps anything that you may have considered before. Right, that this mutation is occurring.
And what's required, right, is to drop right, this previous notion, right, to, to actually turn our backs. You know, I've sort of thought of this often, this card in particular, as being like the thicket that grows around uh, Sleeping Beauty, right? You sort of have to make your way through this thorn thicket in order to reach yourself. But what I'm actually feeling today is that what we want is to turn our back on this thorn thicket, that right, we've been trying to fight our way through to something that is no longer relevant. <clears throat> right, that this, this version of Sleeping Beauty now in this reading is an old, right, is the old story. that in fact, she doesn't need to be saved. She can be allowed to, to die, right? To disappear, to, um, to not be the story any longer, right? To turn our back, to just walk away from all of those old stories. And to arrive in this new story, right? This father of wands, this, um, this kind of magician figure today, he feels really, right? A, because of the wand, but B, because of that lightning coming in, right? It's this, right? This wand that he's taken up, that you are being asked to take up, Aries. to step into the mystery. And actually, as I was sitting here with the reading, when I first turned the cards over, you know, getting to grips with it, I pulled out a book that I have where I wrote, you know, where I've written quotes down. I used to write them down. And, you know, using it as a library oracle, opening the book to a page, and I asked for help, Aries, you know, give me something. And the quote that came up is, those who are willing to be vulnerable move among mysteries. Um, Theodore Rothka, I believe, although I didn't double check. All right, and the next card, right, this insecurity card, right? It's a little, you know, everything from uncomfortable to terrifying, right? This idea of throwing out everything previous. Right, to not rely on past experience, to be willing to say, you know, this energy can mean this. I choose. I choose. Um, those of us who have an Aries sun, right, we're going to experience a Jupiter sun conjunction this year. Maybe you already have if you're in the early degrees of Aries. Now he is moving through sort of a, a retrograde space until he gets to the ninth degree. But it's possible you've gone back, you know, sort of 12 years to see, you know, what, what happened to me, you know, the last time I had a Jupiter Sun conjunction. I've done it myself, right? What, you know, what might it be about? Forget it. Just forget it. Right? This tower moment, this blasted oak of being, right? We're being tossed, right? This lightning strike. 
is breaking this branch, tossing us into the air, into this new landscape, into the unknown, into this mutation, this evolution. And that is followed by the shaman. Accept the power. Yeah. Believe that you have it. Because you do. Believe that you can shift timelines at will. Believe that you can choose how the energy comes through for you. That you can dance with the planetary energies. You are not a victim or someone who has no ability to connect with these universal soul energies. And then we get another page, the Page of Cups. The eternal youth Right, the ability to be both the wise elder and the wondering child. Right, to know that you have experience. You've lived a bunch of life. Right, it's giving you understanding and wisdom and skills, but also know that you can enter into a completely new space. So we have this uh, King of Cups, right, and his hands on his heart. That is the space, right? The heart space. The seat of the soul, our personal grail. And he is emotionally mature. He is emotionally intelligent. He has resilience. confidence that uh, he can you know read his own emotions as well as other people's and then we get her big day there we are Aries we are Right, there's our, our unexpected mutation. Right? She might be a little surprised, right? She's got this fishtail suddenly. And then this high priestess, right? She's kind of the, um, right, the feminine aspect of this shaman. Understanding, spiritual growth, spiritual wisdom, an open consciousness, a willingness to see what is there.
and this willingness, this openness to accepting this path, this role. Um, right, that creates the tipping point. When we step into, right, to, into this new timeline, into this new life, when we give birth to it. And I don't think, right, that this is, you know, that you're going to suddenly, you know, put out a shingle as a shaman. That isn't necessarily what this is about. Right, I don't, you know, maybe some of us are, right, going to become healing practitioners, uh, counselors, um, guides for other people. You might be a, a, a tarot reader or an astrologer. But you might also be an architect or a nurse or a school teacher. or a cook, or a waiter, or an actor, All right? It's about how you move through the world. How do you see physical reality? How do you see your connection to it? Can you know yourself as an extension of source? And also how you behave in groups, right? We have this watcher's card and I feel here, right? That you are right here, you know, here you are Aries in your red dress, joining the group. And some other people, right? In the circle, I sort of presume that it, you know, encircles this whole cemetery, right? That there's a whole big circle with hands joined that there may be others, right, fellow travelers that you'll meet, right, other people in their red clothes that are in this circle, but many of them may not be, right? In my view, right, my cosmological view, right, timelines intersect and cross, Right, you and your timeline meet up with someone in theirs and you have this meeting point where your timelines touch. And that can be a moment of transformation, right? How you behave with that person in whatever capacity you have, right? If you're um, you know, if you're selling them something, if you're uh, designing their house, if you're, um, you know, advising them on some aspect of their life, how do you do that? How do you interact with people? How do you see them? And then the page again. And this time, sort of very specifically, right, the, the interaction of self and the physical natural world. I mean, that's been coming up in many readings. It came up in Taurus's reading that I did yesterday. How do we see and interact with our physical world? How do we move, you know, through that energetic underpinning? How do we affect change, not just in our own environments, but globally? With our attitude, our thoughts, our way of being, our way of moving through the world. 
you know, I know that this is sort of nebulous, right? I'm not giving you a prescription of, you know, how, right? There's no exact how to. You know, it's not that, you know, I'm telling you to, you know, go out and beam love at everybody that you meet. You know, or hug everybody that you meet. Right? Because it's going to be different for different people. Right? It's about, about the dance, about the nuance, about meeting different people where they are. about small interactions that can have far-reaching consequences in people's lives. About accepting this, right, that you are part of this web of life. Accepting that we are all interconnected. And not just, right, with, you know, humans or people here on Earth, but throughout the cosmos, right? Right, that you're just as connected to Pluto and Jupiter as you are to your neighbors. Through source. So it does require an act of faith. This three of inspiration, three of wands. Right, both to step over the gap and also to, right, to start the dominoes going. To become something else. And it may, you know, Aries, of course, it may be that we're, right, that we're sort of starting this way with Aries because we are, as a group, right, prepared to go first. Right? First through the door. Ready to go. To begin. Right? To accept this new role that we are being offered as change makers, not, you know, not with any prescriptive list of things to do. But by who we be, how we think on a daily basis. Right, and this queen of emotions is under there, and I sort of feel like this is the underlying thing, right? We all have this magnificent being within us. You know, even if we sort of feel small up here. If we feel small or ordinary or, you know, we're just human. This, right, lives within us. We have to be willing to believe that, to accept it, to just say yes. And right under that, we have the wheel, right, to allow, you know, uncertainty too, right? To not try and micromanage. You know, we can choose to say, you know, my Jupiter-Sun conjunction is going to be a really positive experience. It's going to be really broadening. I'm going to gain clarity and inspiration. But to not try and micromanage that, right? To allow the inspiration to come wherever it comes from. And the expansion to lead in whatever direction it wants to go rather than trying to steer every last little bit.
because you can't do it. I mean, we are here, right? We are part of source. We have power, but we are not, you know, in our human capacity, really able to see all ends. Nor do I think would we wish to, right? We do want some surprises. Um, so these next three cards are sort of, right? There's three, three ways of earth, right? There's this six of one of six of materials, six of pentacles, reciprocity, giving and receiving, working with others, right? In that group. giving and taking with the universe, with the earth. And then there's the four of materials, right? Our personal bodies, our own stability, our own health. Right? Taking in, you know, what we need for ourselves, both you know, kind of in a mundane way, as well as in a spiritual way. Right? Are allowing our bodies to have all that they need. And then independence. And exuberance. Right? A feeling of affluence. Of the flow. Of resources and life. That we are, you know, part of the great creation. We can be part of this flow and to be stable within and of ourselves. So on the, uh, on the advice front, we start again with this Eight of Wands. My right? energy is incoming. And underneath that is again the King of Cups. Drinking the nectar. By right? drinking out of his cup that is full. And then again, the moon, right? Seeing ourselves differently, right? Seeing ourselves by moonlight, by spiritual light. Seeing ourselves perhaps as mysterious, that this is also a process of a greater self-discovery. What magic do you have within you that maybe you've denied or repressed or not, right, that you simply haven't been able to see before? Can you see it now reflected in the moon water? And then the world. And next to the world, the nine of wands. So the willingness Right, the willingness to chop down. What, you know, is no longer relevant. To just walk away. Right, just walk away from it. And into the new world. Um, I don't always show the cards underneath, um, but I always look at them. And this, the underneath this card is the Knight of Swords. And I often see this Knight of Swords as pulling that blade out of his body. All right, so willingness to unlearn a way of thinking, a set of beliefs, 
about who you are, what you can do, and how the world works. So this is kind of right. It's not a, it's not a practical message, Aries. Um, I, you know, maybe right as we go along and I continue this process, perhaps some more practical steps will become available. But I suspect that the practical steps are going to be because they're going to be different for different people. that they're gonna to come to you more directly. Right, the part of this process is cultivating your own intimate connection to this cosmic information. So that, you know, you may end up watching fewer tarot readings or, you know, learning to do it for yourself or finding other methods for allowing this information to come in. You know, perhaps meditation or meditative practices, um, taking walks, uh, doing something like knitting, uh, cooking, right? Any, any practice where your mind can go off somewhere by itself, right away from the mundane, right? The library oracle, scrying, um, receiving, you know, information from snippets of overheard conversations. There's all sorts of ways that practical advice can come through. You know, go here now, do this now. Um, you know, you may see an ad for something and think, oh, right, I really want to do that program. You know, I really want to take that class or go to that lecture or learn how to do that thing. Or I, you know, I want to take my vacation here. So be open to all the different ways, right, that this Eight of Wands can arrive, that information can arrive. And be open to the unexpected. Be open to not relying on anything that came before as information going forward. Be willing to not know. To know only that it will be a positive experience for you. Right? That this next, you know, Saturn square, your sun is going to be really positive. That it'll be, um, you know, an improvement to your foundation. That you'll gain clarity through the events but not what it has to be exactly, not that it has to be like it was before. Really harness that Aries stepping into new spaces, right? The joy of something completely new. And I'm excited for all of us. And not just Aries, but all the other signs who I think Right, are gonna get their own uh, version of this. Their own call that might be, you know, that might have some different nuance to it. That will take advantage of their gifts. I wish you all the very best, Aries. And I'll see you next time, so long.